Shabbat Shalom, my friends, and also Chag Sameach. After all, Shavuot begins this this Sunday evening. This has been a hard week, a very hard week. I sat at my desk trying to focus on preparing for you a study of this week's Sedra, Bamidbar Numbers 1-1 and following. I love this work. I love finding new directions in which to drill down into our ancient sacred text. I love the way in which so many of you respond to my efforts, some with questions, some with challenges, and thankfully some even with praise. But this has been a very hard week. The book of Numbers is filled with wonderful narratives worthy grist for any teacher's mill. If pressed, we could speak comfortably of a donkey that speaks or of a shattering of the desert landscape as the earth opened up and swallowed alive those who had rebelled against Moses. We could speak of spies and of fear and of frustration of adulterers and Nazarites and so much more. But I just sat at my desk, hitting the computer keys that spilled out the latest dreadful news from Israel riots, missiles, Iron Dome, missiles from Lebanon, the IDF on the border of Gaza, the death of innocents, the deaths of murderers, the deaths of young soldiers fighting in defense of their homeland, the triumphant roar of those around the world who wish Israel nothing good, civil war in towns that Risa and I really love, the collapse of anything resembling a stable Israeli political environment, the splintering of Palestinian leadership. There I was, stuck here at my desk, my muses, all nine of them, cowards all, had fled the scene to places unknown and they had shut off their cell phones. They had ghosted themselves. And all that entered my mind was Israelites in the wilderness, Israelis in the shelters. Israelites in the wilderness, Israelis in the shelters. I reached for Covenant in Conversation, written by Rabbi Uh, Jonathan Sachs, the late chief rabbi of the United Hebrew Congregations of the Commonwealth, a scholar whose teachings have long inspired me, a political force with whom I often disagreed about the role of liberal Judaism in our world. The very introduction, the beginning of this book, somehow inexplicably seemed addressed to me. Date? May 13, 2021, though the book was published four years ago. Sachs quoted Fukuyama, who earlier had claimed that we are moving into an era in which people are no longer willing, this is a quote, to endure the privations of war for the sake of nation, class, or creed, Fukuyama. He then quoted John Lennon, who had sung, imagine, nothing to kill or die for. Imagine all the people living in peace. A secular messianic age was at hand. But then came a bloody clash of civilizations in the former Yugoslavia. And then came the disastrous, hope-shattering Arab Spring. The Hobbesian view of humankind, it seems, wasn't going to give up easily. Life would remain solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. How could these thoughts be an introduction to a study of the book of Numbers? My teacher metaphorically then took me by the hand and shared with me his understanding of Bamidbar, the, the book of Numbers. This 
fourth book of the Torah is profoundly self-critical as it describes episodes during the Israelites' move toward the promised land. But Midbar makes it clear. The desert journey was far more than just an encounter accounting as to how the Israelites made it from Mount Sinai to the borders of the promised land. We students of Torah usually spend most of our time focusing on the challenging physical aspects of that journey. The lack of water, the lack of food, attacks by enemies, rebellions against leadership, exhaustion. That was, that was the stuff. But read closely, Bamidbar actually heads in a totally different direction, Sachs. Sachs insists that the core of this book is all about personal and national transformation. Our feet might take us from point A to point B, but only long, painful experience can help us create the rituals, the habits, the ideals, the memories that can transform a group of former slaves into a courageous and centered people capable of taking control over their own destiny. It took most of the 40 years. Time means almost nothing in the book of Numbers. In fact, time in Bamidbar is notoriously unreliable. And the sources of vulnerability and even of culpability and even of treachery are numerous. The people themselves, their public leaders, who are replaced by others who somehow miraculously saved the day. Shocking circumstances, fear replacing faith, fantasy replacing reality. National unity for our people was almost still born in the trackless Sinai wastes. Sachs insists that political changes can never be brought about by the processes of politics alone. Political changes can never be brought about by the processes of politics alone. Freedom is never purchased for free. Reality is far too often the creation of a strongly held, sometimes mindlessly held set of positions rather than being the byproduct of what the world is actually all about. The book of Numbers, Bamidbar, is seen by Sachs, speaks to us this very week. The crossing of the Reed Sea may be called a miracle. The birth of the state of Israel was a shocking, totally unpredictable, wondrous reversal of history. The wandering through the wilderness was the setting in which the Israelites became a people, learning from disasters, rebellions, enormous successes, horrifying mistakes, fear and uncertainty and confusion. And I would say to you that the history of the state of Israel to this very day has been very much the same. Think about it. So we pray for a cessation of combat. We mourn the innocent dead on all sides. We condemn the extremists among Palestinians and Israelis who thrive on chaos and who distort their own people's national policies. We angrily condemn every missile launch. We condemn those who promote Israeli expansionism, and the continuation of the occupation. We condemn Israeli and Palestinian so-called leaders who cannot get past self-interest and thus are unable to form stable governments capable of changing the toxic status quo. We condemn 
a world that willfully blinds itself to the very real existential threats confronting Israel. Zekatan Aleinu. We can do this. We can unflinchingly support our sisters and brothers as they, as they acknowledge that it is time to leave the wilderness and to enter into a world of national self-determination, mature national self-determination. Ze katan alenu. We can reclaim with clarity our moral stability and our ethical resolve. Ze katan alenu. We can do this. The Israeli state is mature enough now to enter into true partnership conversations with American Jewry. American Jewry is secure enough to accompany those conversations with unbreakable, unconditional love for Israel. The Israelites endured the journey Bamidbar and emerged, emerged from the wilderness an eternal people. With all of us at their side, the Israelis can emerge from this horrifying week prepared to act with maturity, unity, and wisdom to claim their future. Avarnu at Takol. Na'avor at Zeh. We have overcome, survived all that history has thrown at us. And with the unshakable support of world Jewry, Israel can and must, hand in hand with us, start now to build a stable future. Now, we can do this. Shabbat Shalom. And Chag Sameach, welcome to the Book of Numbers.